friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss and it is Friday. So we're gonna talk about my week, my weigh in. We need to have a little chat because I have been a bit on the struggle bus and then of course we're going to set some goals moving into the next week. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I upload a weigh in every Friday and I actually upload five videos each and every week. Down in the description box, I will have nutrition coaching. Highly, highly recommend those personalized macros and calories. That is what I follow to lose and maintain my 140 pound weight loss. I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or just to talk with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things and come join our free supportive Facebook group. We would love to have you. So let's chat. Let's talk about my week, my way in, and let's set us and let's set some goals for the new week. Happy Friday, friends. I hope you had an amazing, amazing, amazing week. I just wanted to give a quick little disclaimer. If you have missed my last couple of weigh-in videos, I am no longer discussing the Weight Watchers workshop topic in my Friday weigh-in videos. Like I've mentioned before, I really don't have access to the topic anymore. Most of you, if not all of you, pretty much said it's irrelevant to you that you'd rather I talk about something that resonates with me for the week, give you some advice, some nutrition coaching, instead of focusing on the Weight Watchers workshop topic. So I will no longer be discussing the topic, but I will have a gen topic or something that I think is important and relevant to the week to share with you in the Friday weigh-in videos. I think you're going to get more value out of that as well. Secondly, I am going to put up a poll on Instagram and in my Facebook group asking for your feedback on topics you would like for me to discuss on Fridays. Is there anything that you're struggling with on your weight loss journey? Is there questions that you, are there questions that you have that I can help answer and give you some context for? Let, so keep an eye out on Instagram and in my Facebook group for that poll asking for your feedback on what you'd like me to discuss in these Friday videos. Also in my Facebook group and on Instagram, I'm going to ask you for some questions for an upcoming Q&A video. It has been a long time since I filmed a question and answer video. A lot has happened in my life. A lot of changes have been made. We're gonna talk about more changes coming and I'm going to ask, and I would love to film an updated Q&A video, so I need your questions. So definitely stay tuned on Instagram and in my Facebook group for the poll on Friday questions and for my upcoming Q&A video. So that's all the updates that I have for you. Let's talk a little bit about my week. Like I said, I wanna have a little chat with you, kind of piggybacking to what I brought up in Wednesday's What I Eat in a Day. If you missed that video, I will link that for you. I kind of talked a little bit about what's been going on, the struggles that I've been having and what I'm doing moving forward. But I wanted to touch base on that again since a few days have passed since I filmed the What I Eat in a Day video. So I have been a bit on the struggle bus and this happened to me a couple months ago too where I feel like I'm kind of reverting back to some of my old habits, certainly not to the extent of those habits that got me to 325 pounds, but I find that I'm kind of reverting back to the not tracking my food habit, to the eating foods that maybe I shouldn't be eating in excess habit. A few months ago, I talked about how I bought this bag of gummies on TikTok and I ate the entire bag in a week. And since that video, I have not bought a single pack of gummies on TikTok. It clearly is a food that I'm unable to have in my home still three years into my weight loss journey and two years into maintaining my weight loss. Well, that same kind of situation happened with candy corn. Now, I know some people are like, I don't know how you eat candy corn, it's disgusting. I love candy corn. It's something I actually look forward to during the Halloween season. I have since the beginning of, since mid-September to current, bought a couple of bags of candy corn. I do have this cute little Frankenstein bowl on my kitchen counter. We leave it out all Halloween. It is a candy dish and I typically keep candy corn in there. Well, I'm not doing that anymore because I ate both of those bags of candy corn over the course of three weeks. And what I was finding is I was going into the kitchen and I would just grab a few pieces multiple times during the day. So I'm eating one, two, 300 calories a day of candy corn and I found that I was reaching for that instead of a healthy snack or something that's going to help me reach my protein goal. And although I didn't eat the whole bag in a day like I did 
before I worked on my relationship with food, I still was eating that candy corn throughout the day when it wasn't giving me, number one, any nutritional value. It was giving me excess calories that I didn't need every single day. And obviously no nutritional value in candy corn other than lots and lots of sugar. Once I went through those two bags of candy corn, I had this epiphany that candy corn is just not a food I can have in my house. And it's interesting to say that because I feel like I have really worked on my relationship with food. I would even say that I've healed my relationship with food. I no longer binge eat. I no longer eat in excess, but, but I ate two bags of candy corn over the course of three weeks. My husband said he had just a couple of pieces. So those two bags of candy corn went into my belly. So it made me realize that although I've healed my relationship with food, there are still certain foods that I guess you could say are trigger foods for me or foods that I mindlessly eat. Again, just a handful here, a couple pieces there, the TikTok gummies and candy corn. So that is something I've realized about myself. And at first I was kind of mad at myself, honestly, and just disappointed in myself because I have done so much work on my relationship with food. Why the heck can't I have candy corn in my house and not eat it all? And I was really mad. Like, what are you doing? What is wrong with you? You have spent your whole, you've spent the last three years losing 140 pounds, maintaining that weight loss. Why can't you have candy corn in the house? And you know what I realized? I just can't have candy corn in the house and that is okay. There are other foods I can have in the house. Right now, those little bags of gummies, and you know I love my gummies, from Trader Joe's are in that candy dish. I don't touch them. I've maybe had one little packet over the course of the last two weeks. So that is a food that can be in the candy dish. That is a food that can be in the house. Candy corn is not, and that is okay. It is okay to heal your relationship with food and still have certain foods that just can't be in your house. Now, will I eat candy corn again before Halloween is over? Sure. Will I buy just a small little packet? Most likely. Instead of the big bag being in my house, being available to me, just a single serve pack so I can still enjoy the foods that I love like candy corn is a better option for me. Now the single packs of gummies, great option to keep in my candy dish because I don't overeat them. And that is just the reality. That's the reality of having an, that is, that is the reality of being addicted to food. That's the reality of overeating food. That is the reality of having obesity in my genes, obesity in ingrained in my body and who I am. That's the reality of it. And that is absolutely okay. It's okay to know your body. Even though you've healed your relationship with food, it's okay to still have foods that you can't have in your home or foods that trigger you to overeat. So that's one big epiphany that I've had and there will not be any more candy corn coming into this house. There just won't be. Now maybe by next Halloween, it'll be a different story. Maybe I'll be able to have that dish of candy corn and not overeat it. But what was happening with the whole candy corn situation is I realized that there were some other habits there were some other unhealthy habits that I was kind of letting back into my life. I wasn't tracking my food regularly. So was I meeting my protein goal every day? I don't really know. I would venture to say most days yes, because I am so protein focused, but was I choosing the healthiest and best foods? Probably not. Was I eating out more than I should? Yes. Was I having more sugary coffees and sugary drinks than I should? Yes. So along with the candy corn, I also realized that there were some other unhealthy habits that were sneaking back in and I had to put the kibosh to, I had to stop that immediately. I will not mark my words, gain my weight back. I will not mark my words, gain 10 to 12 pounds over the next three months. It's not going to happen. I will not allow myself to do that. And that is one thing I'm proud of. I'm really proud of the fact that I was able to recognize that I was spiraling into those old unhealthy habits and stop them. And that's where what I talked about in Wednesday's video came into play. Monday through my trip to Hawaii, which is November 11th, I am focusing solely on my 80 to 90% whole real food and 10 to 20% processed foods. Now, you know I have a protein coffee every morning. The protein shake is a processed food. I'm not going to eliminate processed foods. That's not sustainable. And that goes back to those old diet culture habits of restricting and eliminating foods and I'm just not gonna do it. That's not healthy, it's not sustainable for me. But what I am going to do is focus on whole real food, 80 to 90% of what I eat every day. And I will tell you, I've been doing that since Monday, and there are some pretty major differences that I've noticed. Number one, a lot of my bloating has went away. But more importantly than that, a lot of my food cravings for candy corn and foods that ne aren't necessarily the healthiest has really diminished just in less than a week. 
I find that eating whole foods keeps me more full and satisfied throughout the day, so I have less cravings overall. So it's been really, really good so far. And what I've noticed too, which is huge, 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 is I actually started my cycle yesterday. And those few days leading up to my cycle, I'm usually ravenous for crap. Literal crap food, processed carbohydrates, salty snacks, sweets, mega sweet cravings. I had just a little bit of that up to my cycle, nowhere near what I had when I was just kind of eating everything and not focusing on those whole real foods. So that is another huge, huge, huge win. I am currently on my cycle, so we'll talk about that and how that relates to my weight for the week, but I'm feeling a lot better following this more whole food approach. And my goal, like I said, is to do this up until my trip to Hawaii. But in Wednesday's video, I talked about maybe, just maybe, this would be something I should do until the end of the year. Focus on getting in the habit of that and potentially having that lead into the new year with those healthy habits of whole real food. If I feel as good as I've been feeling this week throughout the rest of the month, you can bet that is something I'm going to carry over for the rest of the year and potentially into the new year. As always, I will be doing a vision board goals video for 2025. I've already been thinking about all of my goals, what's my word of the year, what's my focus, but right now my focus has to be reining in those bad habits that are creeping in. This is the worst time of year for that to happen. Side note, I also want to mention that during the holidays, I am going to eat the foods that I enjoy at parties, at events, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas. I'm not going to, I'm going to enjoy those holidays, but it's a holiday. It's not a holiday week. It's not a holiday month. It's a holiday. And I'm really going to focus on those whole real foods all of the rest of the time. So my week was good just having those epiphanies. And I'm really, really, really proud of myself for recognizing that and reining it in before it got out of control because I just cannot gain my weight back. I can't, I won't let it happen. So whatever I have to do to rein that in, in the healthy, sustainable way, I'm going to do it. And I'm proud of myself, really proud of myself for recognizing that before it got out of hand. Got in all of my workouts this week. In fact, on Sunday, I am running a 5K. It's called the Wicked 5K. It's a Halloween themed event. We are supposed to wear costumes, so I'm not sure what I wanna wear. I may do my hippie costume. I may do my 90s costume that I wore to Julia, my boot camp instructor's birthday party. I may just wear a fun Halloween shirt. I'm not sure yet, but I'm excited for the 5K. I'm excited to get in that extra activity. Also, speaking of activity, my lovely husband, bless his heart, went out to our property for me after he spent the day with his dad this week. I asked him if he could map out how far it is from my new house to the gym in my new community. So right now, the gym that I showed you in my new home vlog is not going to be the gym by the time we move into our new house. They're actually building a 36,000 square foot amenity center that has a gym about three times the size of the current gym. So it sounds like the current gym is going to be specific classes, and then the new gym is going to have all of the weights and the equipment. Well, I do my train well workouts twice a week, and right now, I walk to the gym, it's 1.2 miles each way, do my weightlifting workout with Trainwell and walk home. Well, I was a little concerned that my new gym, the new facility was a little too far from my house. So my wonderful husband mapped it out for me and it is just under two miles each way, which was a big relief because in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, that's like four miles away. No, it's a little less than two miles away. I was going to buy a bike and bike to the gym because I do like to get in some movement before I lift weights with Trainwell. I like to move my body five to six times per week, but I'm happy to report that I think what I'm going to do is walk to the gym, lift my weights, and walk home. Now, granted, it's going to be about a four-mile walk rather than a two-mile walk. We're going to try it out once I move in and see how I like it. Is it something that is sustainable for me because that's really important with my workouts? Is it something that is doable for me the two days a week that I go to the gym? So I was excited and grateful that Troy did that for me and to know that I was way off with thinking how far away the gym was from my new house. And like I said, we're gonna try it out. I'll keep you guys posted once we move into our new house. But I think two miles each way is doable. So we'll see how that plays out. Speaking of new house, today is the day, my friends. We break ground on on our new home today, Friday, October 11th. Now, yesterday the 10th, they staked our property. So basically they scoop up all the dirt and they stake where they're going to lay the, where they're going to pour the foundation. And today is actually the day that we break 
ground. Our house starts getting built today. I'm so incredibly excited. It has been something I've been looking forward to for months. The last couple months, not a whole lot has been going on, but starting today, we are in full force of building our dream home. Troy and I are so incredibly excited. We're actually headed out there a little bit later today to film for the vlog that I'm filming, see the groundbreaking of our actual property. We're so excited. And I'm excited to see the foundation poured, the framing going up. It's going to be an exciting next few months. We're also meeting with our realtor a little bit later this month to talk about putting this home on the market. What does that look like price-wise, timeline-wise? Are we going to list it early and hope that it sells and then we have to move somewhere else? Are we going to list it a little bit later after the holidays? We're meeting with her this month as well. So things are just moving along. Things are progressing and we're really, really excited about it. Lola's still doing fantastic. She's in remission. She's living her best life. She does not go back to the oncologist until later this month, like towards the end of October, just for a checkup. Fingers crossed things go well. She continues to stay in remission. That little dog needs a break from going and having blood drawn, from going and having chemotherapy. Her body just needs a little bit of a break, but she's doing really well. Palmer's as crazy as ever, and Troy is actually doing really well. He has now officially over two weeks Diet Coke free. He's been focusing on just drinking water, Gatorade Zero, and iced tea, and he made a comment yesterday how his joints just feel better. He feels less crotchety, like a less crotchety old man. So I'm hoping that this helps not only with just his joints feeling better by eliminating Diet Coke, but also with his gout flare-ups. And so far, fingers crossed, we haven't had any indication of any gout flare-ups. So he's doing really well, the dogs are doing really well, I'm doing really well, things are really good. Lastly, let's talk about my weigh-in. So like I said, I started my cycle yesterday. A lot of those weird before my cycle craving were really at bay with eating and focusing on whole foods, which I was so thankful for. I am feeling that typical cycle bloat, especially the first about two to three days, I'm pretty miserable. That's when I have cramps. That's when I feel bloated. And today is day two of my cycle. And when I stepped on the scale, I'm actually up 0.6 pounds. Now, let me tell you, the old me would have been pissed off about that because I did shift my eating. I've been tracking my food every single day. I've been reaching at least 190 grams of protein every day. And I'd have been real pissed off stepping on the scale, gaining 0.6, even though I'm on my cycle. But the new me understands that that's just a weight fluctuation. And it's because of my cycle. And just because I had a gain on the scale, even though I feel like I did everything right this week, it's not going to derail my progress. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing what I know is right for my body and my weight loss journey. And a 0.6 gain is just a simple weight fluctuation. And I'm just going to let it roll off my back. And that is something that I never used to do because I just don't care about the scale as much as I used to. It's more about how I feel. How are my clothes fitting? How is my fitness? How's my endurance? How does my body look? Those are the things that matter most to me. So this 0.6 gain is simply a weight fluctuation. I'm not worried about it. I have a feeling continuing on the way that I'm eating. Once my cycle's over, I have a feeling that 0.6 and potentially more will come off. So I'm excited to see what the next week brings. Besides the cramping and the bloating, I'm feeling really good. And like I said, I'm proud of myself. I'm grateful for my new house. I'm grateful my entire higher family is doing well. I just really have a lot to be grateful for right now. And that's a huge, huge blessing. Don't forget to keep an eye out on Instagram and in my Facebook group for the poll for, for top Friday topics, as well as the Q and a questions that you have. Anything goes good, bad, ugly. It'll, you can ask anything that you would like. Again, I will have both of those posted on Instagram and in my Facebook group. Now I want to hear from you. How was your week? Did you gain? Did you lose? Let me know everything going on with you, the good and the bad. I'm here to support you. We're friends on this channel. We're true, true, true friends. So we're all here to support each other. And if you enjoyed another Friday weigh in, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, turn your bell on so you never miss a future video. And don't forget to check out the description box for nutrition coaching. I will link Wednesdays, what I eat in a day where I talk a little bit about the struggle that I have been on and what kind of prompted me to get to where I am today, as well as links and discounts to my favorite things. And don't forget, come join our Facebook group. That's where I'll be posting the poll and for the Q and a video. Happy Friday, friends. Have an amazing, amazing day. And I will see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye.